way, I've just completed the montage. That we will show any time we are doing this realization of the Kwesi Butcher report. Here is the montage. Have a look. be serializing the Chrissy Butcher report starting uh, tonight. Okay, there. Yeah. Uh, all right, I get it now. Uh, welcome also to uh, the program from our spiritual supporters, Che Guevara and Nelson Mandela. Okay, so our first story today at 24 minutes past 9 o'clock is to settle the matter on this so-called conversation occurring on social media where people are beginning uh, to say that after 32 years of the Fourth Republic, Ghana has wasted time and Rwanda is actually ahead. Let's go to the touch screen and, and sort this matter out because I, I really am outraged about why anybody will say that after so much hard work of 32 years and they say that NDC and MPP have messed up the country and Rwanda is better. When, by the time I finish, you will know that Ghana is on a sustainable trajectory of economic development you will understand that strong institutions are always better than strong men. And I made this argument when the Domolevo matter occurred. I'm delighted to report tonight that I have been vindicated completely that it's a strong institutions of the audit service. That's more important than a certain Domolevo who has forged his age. So the civil society people who were at the Christ the King Hall, and I would have liked to be there because I like Catholic Mass, who are celebrating Dom Level and believing that the audit service has collapsed. A year later, the same civil society were applauding the new Auditor General. I will show you why that happened. I was pleasantly surprised that that happened anyway, but it strengthened my resolve that institution, institutional development is far better than strong men. Okay, this is a beautiful country of Rwanda here on our screen. And uh, you have Kigali in the capital over there. And it's, it's quite a big country, nice vegetation. It's bordered by Uganda and uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Burundi and Tanzania. So that's Rwanda buried uh, somewhere in the eastern to southern Africa. I don't know whether they are part of COMESA, which is the Eastern African group, or they are part of SADA, which is the Southern African Development uh, Group. And we are part of ECOWAS, of course, the ec economic community of West African states. Now, this is Rwanda, and there's a country that has been doing well. They've come from a uh, civil war, and they've been doing quite well, and they've been developing. People have admired the development in Rwanda, but underneath the Roman development, we all know what happens. We'll talk about that in a minute. So let's go back and uh, put the post. So this is what I saw. This is, this is what I, I, I was on Facebook, as I usually am, and then I saw this. Joy, MyJoyOnline.com, the wasted 31 years of NDC and MPP. Lessons, I was shocked. Lessons from Kigami's RPF in Rwanda. We can learn lessons from a country where they shoot dead people who violate COVID restrictions. We should learn that. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. Why anybody will write this? Don't we understand what our democracy means even to the rest of the world. Why are we doing this because of one matter or the other? This is a no-brainer. It will, it will never work. No analyst will read this and not be outraged. That's Rwanda. Okay, so let's move on. Now, this is what uh, was written. Uh, apparently, the article was by my friend Ivan Mesa, who had been to Rwanda on a nice trip and had a good time, and he said uh, as follows. He said, the wasted 31 years of NDC and MPP lessons from uh, Rwanda. He says, the political party in Rwanda that prioritizes discipline over chaos, policy over politics, and he says his personal favorite is meritocracy over party loyalty. I don't even understand that. I, I mean, when people say meritocracy is not working in Ghana or anywhere else, in the political context, I don't understand it. Do they mean that the people who are holding the political office are less qualified than they themselves in civil society? Or what really do they mean by the meritocracy? Politics is complicated, but that's the way you set up a country as an institution, as a system. In that manner, it will grow. So, but let's, let's move on. Let's move on. So they say that 
the last bit is the reason they had a panel made almost exclusively of international experts with no affiliation to the party at their commemorative event. If this was an NDC or NPP event, the panelists would have been party loyalists, sympathizers, and activists who choose not because they are the best in their field, but because they are party people. Okay, if you were a political party in a democracy like Ghana, and you continue to, tonight I'll be talking about the Kwesibotri reports, and you'll see what is inside. And you continue to pr present your people as more party loyalists than experts, it means your government will fail. When your government fails, you will be deselected at the next election. That's the cost of democracy. It takes a while, but that is how you build. I I'll, t I'll tell you more. Okay. It says, if only the NDC and the MPP can adopt this policy over a political approach, Ghana may well be on its way back to economic salvation. What does that, what does that even mean? <laughs> what does that mean? If Ghana could adopt the approach of uh, Rwanda, where you are not using party loyalists, you are using, will be on a uh, uh, way to where? Economic salvation. What does economic salvation mean? Okay. Rwanda is not claiming it has arrived. No, Rwanda is far from arrived. They still have tremendous challenges, but right now, they are Africa's brightest shining economic lights. Good. That's my point. They are because they first fixed their governing political party. Fantastic. This is false. It's an absolute falsity. Because if you look at the last 10 years of Africa's history, you will find countries that were better than Rwanda, like my favorite country, Libya. Libya had achieved all the MDGs. Libya, Colonel Gaddafi, had achieved everything in the Millennium uh, Challenge, Millennium Development thing. Everything that we are struggling to achieve, Gaddafi had it. What happened? Because it was built on a strong man. It was not built on strong institutions. It will never work. Rwandans today don't know what happens after Kigami goes away. I'll get there. All right. So um, I wrote this as follows. So I was referring to Samson. I said, Senior, very good research work. To achieve that, which is what has been said in the article, you need almost a one-party state like we had under the 1964 Constitutional Amendment. Now, I was making the point that what Rwanda is doing, we have done it before, and we failed woefully at it. So we don't want to go back because it hasn't built anything. In 1964, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah decided that for the same economic prosperity that we needed, he did not need dissenting opinion as a leader. And therefore, he amended the constitution to outlaw all political parties and let the CPP be the only legitimate political party. And actually, they changed the national flag to the CPP colors. And Nkrumah's vision was so that we can move correctly and develop economically and stop this political and human rights and all of this. He thought all of that was unnecessary. Two years down the line, he was gone. Because there's something about human rights, and that's why in the 1992 Constitution, it's described as an inalienable right of man. It's not right that, that we, we fight for. It is right that is given to a child when he's born. It's given by the spiritual authority. And so it is a part of man. If you give a man streets of gold, and you take his inalienable right from him, he would resist it. That is why they celebrated when my friend Gaddafi fell. Gaddafi had done everything for them, but he had taken away their rights. It doesn't last. To build a country, you have to build the institutions. And that's why I'm happy about Barack Obama's statement. And you saw, you saw Barack Obama's face, how serious he was. I said, listen, Africa, let me tell you. Because that is the difference between Africa and the United States. The difference between Accra and Westminster. The British parliamentary system has been there for a thousand years. And so he looks at Africa and he's telling us, that, look, you people, what you need, and you are my people, that's the point Obama was making. What you need is to build institutions and stop following strong men. Let's go and see what happens. Uh, and I said, Rwanda is high on the list of human rights abuses. Are we prepared to go down that line? For example, a one, that is a one-party state and human rights abuses. Is that what they're asking us to do? We should form a one-party state, only NDC, only MPP, or cut some NDC, cut some, and make a one-party state, and just be abusing human rights and kicking people from the street, and when somebody violates a sanitation rule, you shoot at him and he dies. COVID in Rwanda. I'll show you the, the articles. I'm not just talking. I'll show you the evidence of it. In, in Rwanda, when COVID came, in Ghana, there were COVID restrictions. We were put under restrictions. Did the police or soldiers shoot people who were violating COVID restrictions? In Rwanda, they did. They shot them to death, killed them. That's what they're doing in Rwanda. And that's what 
civil society people are thinking is better than Ghana because you saw a clean road? I am totally shocked. But let's move on. All right. For instance, people were shot dead for violating COVID restrictions. Should we have done that in Ghana? Also, comma, what happens after Paul Kigami? Remember my hero, Colonel Gaddafi of Libya. He sorted out all the development issues and eradicated poverty. But because it was not based on the system, it did not survive. That's what happened in Libya. That's why Obama said, Africa needs strong institutions and not strong men. Okay, let's move on. And I say that Ghana has a better trajectory for survival than Rwanda. Why? Because we know what will happen after Kufuado. He will leave and someone else will come. In fact, Ghana has a speaker from the opposition. What we need to do is what you did, I was referring to something, what you did on News File on Saturday, to commence a serious conversation on constitutional amendments to make it better, safer, and less autocratic. Viva democracy, strong institutions last forever, I said, but strong men last only for 74 years. And I said people should have a grace Ramadan. Now, this evening I'm going to break it down in some details and show you a lot more of what I'm saying. So let's get back to the, uh, the, the Rwanda story. Right. Uh, let's, let's talk about Dom Levo now. And I'm still about the Rwanda story. What I mean by building strong institutions. Once upon a time, Dominic Domelevo, who was the Auditor General, my friend here, it was alleged against him that he has forged his age. He didn't respond. And on that account, he was asked to leave office. By the time he was asked to leave office, he had come from a leave upon which he had been directed to go. Um, he had exchanged letters with the office of the president in a manner that was hostile. So civil society had jumped to Domelevo's defense and thought that political authority was impeding institutions of state. And that they needed somebody, a strong man like Dom Levo, to do some charade and some razzmatazz for us to know that he's a strong man. He tried. The law was on, against him. So he left. Civil society berated everyone. I, I was here. I was called all kinds of names, which is okay. Now, Dom Levo left. One year later, civil society was seen writing articles and publishing text to support the new Auditor General who they didn't want to see. Now, how, was, how did that happen? I, I didn't know that was going to happen. I was just pleasantly surprised, and I was reinforced in my belief that institutions are better than men. All of you civil society people, you have been applauding this man. The same man that you said he cannot do the job because he's going to be a stooge. Do you know why you're applauding him? You're applauding him because the institution of the audit service is working. It doesn't need Paul Adomach. It doesn't need Samuel Abujina. It doesn't, the institution doesn't care who is there. And that's why you're applauding him. I don't know how civil society felt when they were applauding the man. I don't know how they felt. And I don't know how the man received the applause. Because this is the same man, when he took over as Auditor General, he met all civil society and explained to them that it is about the institution. It's not about Dom Levo, the, the love of their life. It's not about that. It's about building the audit service. Today, we have built an audit service. The same man they said was... Uh, uh, stooge of government, was hampered by government, etc., etc. He had to have the attorney general to write to him and tell him that some of these things you publish, it is libelous and defamatory. So let's look at it another way. And then civil society jumped, hey! But this is the same civil society who said that because Dom Levo has been sad, the audit service in Ghana has collapsed. The audit service has continued to play its role in our democracy. And that is sustainable. That will take you 200 years. And the audit service will be a solid institution. So anybody becomes president in Ghana, anybody becomes speaker of parliament in Ghana, anybody becomes minister of anything, you know that at the end of the year, you, you will have to account to the audit service. They will write letters to you and you have to send it to them. We are developing principles, systems that build institutions for the sustenance of our democracy and our development. And you say we, we should not admire this. We should go and admire Rwanda, where every day they are killing people. Now, let me show you what happens in Rwanda. Let me show you what happens in Rwanda. Thank you, Barack Obama. Thank you very much. First, before that, let's talk about Colonel Gaddafi. Now, I, I, I know Gaddafi, you know. Let, let's, let's finish with Gaddafi. I'll come back to Rwanda. Okay. Colonel Gaddafi, you know, I, I, I know him. I, I met him twice. First time I met Gaddafi, I was 10 years old. And it happened in Ghana. Both occasions were in Ghana. He was arriving in Ghana, 
And uh, so because of who he is, I, I am guessing that they picked up the, the chaps from Burma camp because it was thought that we were the most loyal children to the administration of JJ's Green Revolution because we were children of the revolution, as it were. So they sent us to the airport uh, because they said Colonel Gaddafi was coming. And we had heard Gaddafi on uh, the name mentioned on radio news and all of that. So we're looking forward to see. I was very excited that day. The sun was quite hot, but we were all very happy. And then when we, whilst we were at the airport sort of waiting, it took a, quite a long time, actually. He said it was going to come at 8. It came about 3 o'clock, something like that. So it was really, really long. Now, just about the time he was to arrive, the Libyan guys came to tell us and explain to us how we should cheer him on. That's what, that's what they, t they told us. And they said, when he's approaching, you will, one, one group of you will say, Jaha Maria. Then the other one will say, Fata. That's what it, I was 10. So he said, Jaha Maria, Fata, Jaha Maria, Fata. We were excited. So I was in love with Colonel Gaddafi. And I saw him. He was in the open car, and he drove past, and he was waving. And we had one hand Libyan flag, one hand Ghanaian flag. Jamaria Fata, Jamar. We did all that. Okay. Fast forward. In the 2000s, Kufour was president, and he came. By then, I had gained some traction. So at the Elwak Stadium, I was allowed to go in there behind the important people. And I got close to him, and I greeted him. He spoke so softly that I fell in love with this hero more. And I was telling him that I was in Ghana when he came the first time. And he said, okay. He didn't quite say anything. He just nodded his head. And, you know, that was a trip that he drove from Libya to Accra. That, I don't know whether some of you remember that. But he drove his land cruises all the way to Accra. He didn't fly. He was, he was going across Africa when he was setting up the new African Union. And all of that, all those ideas were Gaddafi's ideas. Brilliant guy. Now, Gaddafi sorted out Libya. What do Kigami is doing is nothing. Gaddafi sorted out Libya, complete. Oil rich country, everything works. He created an artificial dam. They are a desert, they don't have water. Gaddafi gave them water. There were farms in Libya and there were no farms in tropical West Africa because Gaddafi created artificial water. That's how great the, the leader was. He created artificial water for the people. That's Colonel Gaddafi. But he took away their human rights. He didn't build systems. My friend Gaddafi didn't build any institutions for Libya. He didn't. He built himself. He was a strong man. And at the time when he was getting out, the people now started to discuss that is his son saved Gaddafi going to take over from him. And the people who had been buried, as buried in quotes, the supporters of King Idris, those of you who know Libyan history, the supporters of King Idris who had been buried by Gaddafi were still crying. And the human rights abuse in Libya was rampant. That's what it was. One day Gaddafi fell. Everything that he's built in Libya collapsed because it was based on a strong man. It's not based on strong institutions. And I don't understand how in 2023, any civil society will do a comparative analysis of Ghana and Rwanda and say that after 31 years, NDC and MPP have wasted Ghana's time and Rwanda. I mean, come and look at the 31 years of Ghana's Fourth Republic. Look at Supreme Court decisions. Now, if you see the... 300-year-old Asante culture. This is now led by the 16th occupant of the Golden Stool, Otu Fosse to the second. Why is it 300 years old? Because everybody in Asante mind knows that if somebody takes my land, on Tuesday, I can go to Asante Hima's court. It's a system. It's an institution. It's not even about the Asante Hima. Whether she's there or another Asante Hima is there or another one is there, the person will get a hearing. And that is why it is sustainable. But if you go and build a strong man who says I'm Kigaga, now let's get, let's get to Rwanda. Let's get to Rwanda and, and show the people what's happening in Rwanda. Those who think that Rwanda is better. Now here it is. Rwanda police shoot, kill two for breaching COVID-19 lockdown. Can you imagine that? You are shot dead because you breached COVID-19. That's what they do in Rwanda. How can anybody think of, how can you even think of that? Now Kigame is going to be in power for, now they've elected him to continue to be in power till 2034. 2034. That's, that's today in Rwanda, Kopokigami is in power till 2034. He has been in power since 2000. He was going to continue to be in power 2034. 34 years. Maybe he thinks that having a longer period will be able to sustain it. Mobutu Sese was in power for how long? Samuel Doe was in power for how long? 
Colonel Gaddafi was in power for how long? Play back Barack Obama. Play Barack Obama again before we continue. Play it. Let them get it. Play it, please. Play it. Now make no mistake, history is on the side of these brave Africans. Not with those who use coups or change constitutions to stay in power. <laughs> Africa, Africa doesn't need strong men. It needs strong institutions. Now make no mistake, history is on the side of these brave Africans. Not with those who use coups or change constitutions to stay in power. <laughs> Africa, Africa doesn't need strong men. It needs strong institutions. So you heard that. It's not that people will take coup and do this and that. No, no, no. And you see, I like the, the, uh, the anxiety on his face when he, you saw that his face changed. And he said, Africa. He really was saying, Africa, my people, listen to me. What we need here is not strong men. We've had too many strong men. Mobutu Sesezeku, Jonas Savimbi, Felimo, Renamo, Charles Taylor, Yomi Johnson, Emperor Bokasa, and Mengistu Haile Marian, and uh, Mohammed Siad Bari, and Bembela, and Kwame Nkrumah, and uh, Hosni Mubarak. And where, where are they? What happened? That's what I think was going through the president's mind when he said Africa needs strong institutions. And then Obama was here in 2009. Look, see how many years ago. And then today, somebody says, we should look at Rwanda. You have wasted your 31 years on NDC and MPP. Look at Rwanda. Look at this. Rwandan police shoot, kill two for breaching COVID-19 lockdown. Is that, is that what we should be doing? Beating people for lockdown? Opposition members keep going missing in Rwanda. Few expect them to return. Can you imagine that? This is, this is a CNN story. Opposition members are going missing in Rwanda. Opposition members in Ghana, are they lost? Have they gone missing? Were they in parliament last Friday? Opposition members, were they in parliament? Are they around? Do they do party and wedding anniversaries and all that? And after that, they criticize government. And do they do, they do that? Did you see the handshake between President Akufado and Caleb Kuda at the Legon today? Caleb Kuda put it on his uh, social media. I'll show you the photograph if I get it. That's, that's how it works. That is the way. It might take long. Yes, it might. But that is the way in which when you have built it, nothing will change it. That's why America is what it is. 200 years of democracy, nothing will change it. That's why a president, a former president can be indicted. It's the system. And he will defend himself through the system. The system allows him to defend himself. Rwanda, do they have Supreme Court? Do they have Court of Appeal, High Court? How is their court system? How does it work? How does a president, uh, price of Rwanda's clean street, detain children, NGO says. So if you look at this photograph, the story says that homeless children are cleared up from Rwanda streets and put in a concentration camp so that the streets are clean. Is that something to do? We want our streets to be clean. But should we go now, in, uh, in, in, if, if you are in Kumase, in, uh, in Kwadaso, a doom area, and clear up all the people in the streets and put them in a concentration camp? Should we come to Accra and clear up all them, put them in a concentration so that the streets will be clean? No. We gradually build, educate, let people have free education, let them develop skill. Let them be able to do something. It's going to take 20 years to clean the street. It might. It might take 25. Rwanda will do it one year because they are shooting everybody. In fact, they can do it in 30 minutes. Rwanda can clear their streets in this. They are holding a gun. Pa, 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 pa. Rwanda streets clean. Is that something somebody wants Ghana to do? I cannot believe this. Is that something anybody in civil society wants Ghana to emulate? It may take us 20 years to clear the streets. But by the time we have cleared the streets, our young people know that if I'm a plumber, I'll get a job here. I can do this. The real estate people are building. It's doing that. It's doing that. And everybody can get a place. There are still homeless people in London streets. I see them all the time. They are there. They are begging for a pound. They say, give me a pound for sandwich. That's how they say it. They are on London streets. United Kingdom is about the fourth or fifth largest economy in the world. They are there. In America, in New York, there's more money in New York than there are in many parts of the world. The beggars are on New York streets. And the police is not shooting them. 
We are not shooting them. And that's why they have built a strong institution. Now, look at this. Rwanda votes to give President Paul Kigame rights to rule until 2034. Well, what, 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 what's that? What is this? What is this? President Paul Kigame to rule until 2034. What was that? Is he a monarch? What was it? Is that what somebody wants us to emulate? We shall not emulate this one. And I wanted to make the point strongly, and I'm looking for people to, to challenge and analyze and discuss this matter. Because this Rwanda uh, thing seeming in our conversation is very, very dangerous. Particularly dangerous. And I, I suspect that an agenda is going to be pushed around and say that the Fourth Republic has been wasted, and we are not going to accept that. We're going to offer an opinion. And our viewers must decide which narrative better sits with the development of Ghana. Well, what, what is this? What is this? Rwanda votes to give uh, President Paul Kigami a uh, 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 right to. So after 2034, Rwanda don't know what's going to happen. I'm telling you, they don't know. We know that Akufado, today is what? April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Da, da, da. Yeah, we know that 7 January 2025, Akufado is gone. We know that today. Somebody will come. We even have a fair idea of who it could be. If it's NDC, it could be this. If it's primary seasons have started now, people are campaigning. That's a democracy. It's not going to give us everything at the same time. But once you support human rights, which is given by God, and then you develop along, you will get there. You don't need to shoot people to make your streets clean. You need to get them out in a human way. It will take long. It will take a bit of money. But that is how you build a society. As I said, strong men will live for 74 years. Strong institutions will stay forever. So nobody should come and talk about Ghana and Rwanda and compare Ghana to Rwanda and suggest that somehow or rather that Rwanda is better and that we have wasted. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't get that. It's making me feel more and more like publishing that book I've been talking about, which is in the works, about what has happened in the 32 years of the Fourth Republic. You have 31 years of an uninterrupted democracy. Parties have won elections and changed. In Ghana, we have had elections that has differed with 25,000. Nobody has been shot. Nothing. Nobody has been killed. No, no fighting. Members of parliament in the opposition, they are on radio, they are on TV, they are talking everywhere. Anybody talks about the president. No problem about it. When it was John Mahama, we did. When it's Akufuado, we are doing. Next president will still do. That's a democracy. You are building something serious. And then you have this. You are a civil society person in Ghana. And then you say, put on the first slide. Let's see. Uh, the slide with uh, Gigami and, uh, and Akufuado and everybody else. I mean, uh, this one. The, the one with Gigami and Akufuado and the, the very first one. They're going to put it on. I mean, yes, this one. Look at this. My joy online. Ah! How can they publish this? The wasted 31 years. Wasted. I mean, look at the use of the words. The wasted 31 years of NDC and MPP. Lessons from Kigami. Oh, 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 oh. This is so painful. This is actually, I feel like crying. This is actually painful. Hey, the work that has been done by Professor Dubois is dead. By J. Kufo, he's not dead. NDC people, better Samuel Harry Sawyer is dead. I mean, Harun Eseku, Apia Minkan, Kwame Pienim. All the work that they've done to bring us to where we are, criminal libel has been repealed. Right to information bill has been passed. You tell me that it is a wasted 31 years and that we should go and learn from the one who wants to be president forever. Oh, this is not good. I I'd like people to now to talk to us. And tell us what they think about this. It's uh, uh, eight minutes to the top of the hour. Uh, our first story is a wonder story. And, and so we are kind of done with it now. Uh, do you have some messages that we can look at? Yes. Uh, Abdul and uh, Mikael. So Abdul, let me, let me start with you. How many? And okay. tell us what, what people are saying. What are people saying? Okay, so this one is coming from Thomas St. He says that Nana Adudankwa's needless interference and influence of the state institutions in Ghana has rendered them the weakest and poorest. EC destroyed, judiciary destroyed, state media destroyed, Bank of Ghana destroyed. Uh, Genia Akbar says that Ghana is better than Rwanda, so there's no way we can compare Ghana to Rwanda. Mr. Paul, everybody knew that any time uh, with MPP took... Okay, so the message is not really clear. 
Uh, this one is coming from Odinehu Ajiman Sanya. He says that the civil society group takes Ghanaians for granted. They have made themselves teen gods and always wants to play on the intelligence of Ghanaians. And finally, from Carl R. Peters. Voters were also shot in Ghana during the election. What do you say about that? Strong, how do you build strong institutions? Is it not by building strong men? That's an idea he puts out. Now, this is from uh, Stanley Brown. He says, his troops are protecting Western companies. No, please, no, please. Let me interrupt you. I've had this message before. That how do you build, it's a good question. How do you build strong institutions? Is it not by building strong men? No, please, it's not. The answer is found in page 26 of a book entitled Plato's Laws. And in page 26 of Plato's Laws, Plato prescribes what can save a state. He says, the salvation of the state lay in removing government from untutored hands so that the society will be governed according to the findings of philosophy. Now that's how, that's the answer to the question. Okay. It is the findings of philosophy that are documented, that builds institutions. It's not about men. So what, what are the, how, how do you do the findings of philosophy, for instance? So we decide that we want a commission for human rights and administrative justice. There's wisdom in having that to balance a democracy. How are we going to do it? Okay, we set up an institution at the parliament, Article so and so. What, what are we going to do? We're going to have a commissioner, two deputy commissioners, that, 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 that the commissioner can do this, cannot do that, he can do this, he cannot do that, he can do this. If somebody challenges him, you can go to a high court, you can also challenge him through parliament. That's what you build, that's how you build an institution. So when the institution is built, and Commissioner Emil Schott walks in, his role and what he can do is not better than Commissioner Anna Bosman. Because it is the institution of Shraj. You build it. You, don't, you forget about men. You just build the institution. When Emil Schott was leaving Shraj, people thought that nothing would happen. And a bossman came and distinguished. Yes, that's what it's about. When D.F. Annan was Speaker of Parliament, I thought that we cannot have a better speaker. Ajete came and took it to, out of the roof. Because the institution of Parliament is built. When the MPP lost their parliamentary vote, if it was the other side, they would start taking guns and shooting at these people. Or they would arrest Abambagbe and take him somewhere. But the governing, governing party was told by phone, the president was told, that we have lost the, the, the speakership. So, oh, wow, what happened? We think one of our people voted against us. Really? So where are we? He said, yeah, six o'clock is done. It's okay, no problem. It's a democracy, we work. Those were the opening lines of his speech that morning. That the Ghanaian people have thrown a democracy to us. They have entrusted that with it that we can work together. That's how you do it. Now you can't have this and then say, I prefer Rwanda. Because they are clean streets. Oh, Rwanda is Africa's brightest. What? Have you factored in the people who are in concentration camps? Have you factored in the things that happen? Have you factored in the things that happen to individuals? See, for inalienable rights, even if it happens to one person, it's bad enough. And that's why I support the call for the, uh, the uh, I think he's talking about Martin James's Corsair's constituency. That's when some people were killed during the election. And that has been a call that's been going on for a long time. The president has responded to it. The Inspector General has responded to it. But that is how it is in Ghana. Because of who we are, that's an important matter. In Rwanda, you cannot even talk about it. If you talk about it, it will kill you too. You can't talk about it in Rwanda. And then somebody looks at Rwanda and says, Rwanda is, you see, this civil society thing, we have to look at it. Okay, all right, finish your messages then. Right, so Patrick watching us from the UK says, Hi, Paul. Success without a successor is a big failure. Record Man says, Good evening, Paul. I remember when Aqua Pimpolo was jailed six months for indecent exposure. Ghanaian journalists, lawyers, and celebrities vilified the court till the lady was fined and freed. A few weeks later, a lady was jailed two years for indecent dressing in Rwanda. These same Ghanaians hailed Paul Kagame. I think we are sick. Now, Kamal Amasama Brody says, Paul, the headline may be misleading, but the fact that Rwanda is a shining example in Africa is a fact. I was there in 2018 and it's the cleanest country, orderly, good layout, raking in foreign exchange from tourism. I think you need to acknowledge that rather than try to downplay the successes they've achieved. No, I acknowledge it, but they did it by killing people off the street. You shoot people, you, you can't clean street right now. If tomorrow morning you say that you want to clean the Osu street, you just shoot people. Yeah, you get it. 
Mm -hmm. But if you have to build it, it's not as simple. It's not very simple like that. You have to build it. And when you build it and it is built, it will last forever. It will not last with the 74 years. Yeah. It will last forever. That's what I'm saying. Uh, we have one more? Sure. So uh, Nana Boachi says, Paul, human rights must be defined within the context of every country's social values and not the sorts of human rights defined by outsiders. And lastly, uh, God Sway Salam says, Mr. Paul, I want to ask this question. How many, please, how many times is a Ghanaian citizen allowed to be sworn in as president in the Republic of Ghana? If two, why are freedom fighters not talking about it? Why not academics who know the law? Why are they not talking? Who's freedom fighters? Uh, I, I'm not sure which people is referring to by saying freedom fighters. Is it referring to President Muhammad swearing in? I've heard people say something like that, that President Muhammad has been sworn in twice, so he cannot be president. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> not true. Well, I mean, President Muhammad's first swearing in is, is captured by the Constitution. In fact, it's predicted by the Constitution. You see how serious Ghana is. We have a Constitution that makes predictions that if the president were to fall, this is what should happen. So, and it goes on to say, if the president falls within the first two years of his four-year term, or the second two years of his four-year term, all of it means something in the Constitution. President Muhammad is fine to contest for elections, as far as I know, I think that's the position of the law. I don't want to deal with that, but I hear people talking about that. But because they think he was sworn in on 24 July uh, 2012, and he was sworn in again on uh, uh, 7 January 2013, so, I don't understand that. The 24th July 2012 is taken care of by the 1992 Constitution. And so the, 13th, uh, the 2013 swearing-in is also taken care of by the 1992 Constitution. In those circumstances, John Dramani Mahama has one more attempt at the presidency under the law. This is Ghana. Who comes after Pokigami? Rwanda, they don't know. They don't have any idea. They don't know who comes after Pokigami. They don't know. Is that how to build a society? Anyway. Are we done on your messages? No. Okay, all right. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we go to the high court and listen to um, uh, minority leader, Kesalato Fosse. own business takes time, passion, and hard work. It takes commitment and perseverance in the face of challenges. As an entrepreneur, I look for value. How to get more for less? That is what Vodafone Too Much Business gives. Too much data, minutes for calls, SMS bundles, and my favorite part is too much flexibility to customize your mobile plan. Get more value for your business. Sign on to Vodafone Too Much business a cost efficient mobile offer that allows you to choose and customize how much data voice or sms allocations your business needs send stats to 050-777-9000 or email vodafonebusiness.gh at vodafone.com whatever your business needs are vodafone too much business has a solution for you Dummy dribbles to the right. He's got an opportunity on the edge of the penalty box. He's gone past the defense. This must surely be it. Goal! It's a goal! With only one city 50 pesos, you can win up to 16.5 million Ghana CDs in the Betway at Nakesia Jackpot. A hey, jackpot muhine. Bet responsibly, not for persons under the age of 18. This advert has been approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Secretary. Yes, boss. Pachon Fakot document in Brent. Pacho Medeba. Boss Pacho. Oh, sorry, 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 boss. Now, uh, I am saying. Ah, it's Wow. Over air for general well-being. Sir. Hey, very good. A man in my money, I madam. Copy me now. Any a crudio. Copy me now. Copy me now. Ghana for say money me say me do money say me to try a jee a man for sir. Ena me here a draw a bit to try a jee me a fee a real good draw be free. Now me to me a jee na me na so a jee a man for. I said, I'm 74 mixture. I'm going to 
a supporting new new system. Na eba mi asunge. A drawing in your map in four. A batter one more man of four. And in Koda won in four do you. FDA a jay jay din kratu ya tu. Mall? Sure. Ride in a few taps. Don't party? Sure. Ride at fixed prices you know up front. Home. Sure. Ride with in-app safety features 24-7. Ride, surely, with Yango. Do you need a place with a stunning view and serene environment? Just beneath the Green Mountains with a commercial center and recreational area with an amazing park? Then look no further. Hello, sir. Hi. Welcome to Reho Booth Havens, the most affordable yet luxurious gated community located in Damfa, Accra. We have two and three bedroom houses with spacious park. Let me show you. All of our rooms come with beautiful porcelain tiles, <laughs> durable fitted kitchen cabinets. Constant water supply. Electricity and water 24-7. I'm buying this house. Hmm? Stop processing my papers. Eh? Move it, move it. If you're living in Ghana and want an affordable and luxurious house to buy, look no further than Rehoboth Social Housing Limited. Oh. And to those from the diaspora, aren't you tired of living in places that doesn't belong to you? You can also own your house and be your own landlord from Rehoboth Social Housing Limited. I have my own, but also landlord. <laughs> Contact us now, Rehoboth Social Housing. Your housing dream becomes reality. A state-of-the-art facility built with your family needs in mind. A medical center positioned for all your fertility problems and other diseases. Medimosis Clinic and Prostate Center. Our goal is to help our patients achieve and maintain optimal health. We have fully functional OPD laboratories in all our branches. Do you have problems urinating? Medimosis is the ultimate solution. Our Prostacure X capsules and Prostacure Herba T treat prostate problems. Our Fromosis capsules gives you maximum performance and for the ladies Femacure X capsules solves all your menstrual problems locate Medimosis Clinic and Prostate Center at Adenta Barrier near the traffic light Ashaman Ajay Kojo Kumasi Ahinima Kokobing and in Accra Ministries after the Ghana Highways Yard call 0244 068 447 we accept national health insurance card and all other private insurance card Medimosis Clinic and Herbal Center your ultimate solution for prostate problems.